A cloud solutions architect is a highly sought after position, which means the interview process can be tough. But don't worry, I have got you covered. I've interviewed many, many candidates during my time at AWS, and I noticed a few patterns. So let's dive into the five main reasons you may have struggled in your previous interviews and how to overcome them for future ones. My name is Ilyas. I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. Reason number one is insufficient technical knowledge but it's not what you think. Here's a bold statement. Gone are the days when a solutions architect was able to master all services, was able to answer all questions about all products. With AWS alone offering more than 200 services, it's just absurd to try to master all of them. And even if you attempt it, you can be sure that by the time you've done it, 200 more services will be released. So instead of making the mistake of trying to learn all these services and their features by heart, you want to focus on the fundamentals. Let's look at networking, for example. Rather than learning what specific services offer, like security groups and transit gateways and target groups and direct connect and placement groups, just to name a few of AWS networking related services, instead of that, you want to make sure you have a very good understanding of networking fundamentals, such as the OSI model, network virtualization, IP addressing, routing, gateways, because the interviewer in front of you know two things. First, these features are always evolving. So knowing how a VPC operates in 2022 doesn't mean you'll be an expert in it in 2023. And second, you can Google stuff or you can chat GPT stuff nowadays. But if you understand the OSI model, for example, you'll easily know that Amazon's application load balancer is directly related to level seven, where you will be balancing the application itself using routes, right? Slash users goes here, slash profile goes here. Amazon's gateway load balancer is directly related to level four, where you can handle sessions and connection types like TCP, UDP, and Amazon's network load balancer sits somewhere between level three and level four. So you have some level of control there as well. Once you get that, you will be able to choose the right one for the use case you have at hand, regardless of how the service is named or the set of features it offers. Okay, the second reason I keep seeing candidates fail their essay interview is painfully simple, poor communication abilities. I'll say it again, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, a solutions architect position is a customer facing position. Strong problem solving skills to diagnose and tackle complex cloud infrastructure challenges are not enough if you can't communicate your thought process clearly during the interview. And that's why in this channel, we make a ton of videos about how to communicate your solutions effectively to various types of audiences. Check out this one, for example, where I go through how I personally use analogies like restaurants and buildings and car rental companies to communicate complex cloud concepts to a non-technical audience. So click on the pop-up or you'll find link in the description as well. Reason number three is the lack of real world experience. Unless you're interviewing for an entry level SA position, what fan companies usually call associate level, interviewers value candidates who can showcase hands-on projects or case studies they've worked on. There's a huge gap between what you will learn in a tutorial and what you will acquire should you work on the same problem, but for real. For one, tutorials and courses never touch on the problem of scalability. You know, you're most likely building a hello world by yourself and deploying it for yourself on your AWS account to use it yourself. In the real world, you're working with a team. Your solutions are meant to serve thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of customers. Your solutions should follow various compliance and regulations, which is never the case in a five minutes tutorial. And trust me, you will get questions like, hmm, tell me about a time when your solution had to be served from another region, blah, 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 blah. What did you do to accommodate that need? Which means the interviewer is expecting you to be mindful about 
how, for example, serving a solution from European regions means you need to comply with GDPR. That's, that's the law that requires all those cookies, notifications, or how crossing oceans affects latency data crossing oceans. I mean, just this morning, Facebook got fined $1.3 billion by the Ireland's Data Protection Commission for transferring data from Europe to the US. So again, Unless you're interviewing for a junior position, your certifications, and I say this with all the love I have in my heart, your certifications don't mean a thing. And you're going to want to watch this video about why I think it's absurd to use certifications to acquire knowledge and what you should do instead. The fourth reason is the inability to explain cloud infrastructure design decisions. This ties back to the point two about communication skills. I can't tell you how many times I was sad to see us turning down a brilliant candidate because of their inability to articulate why their chosen solution was the best fit for the given problem. I had to interview this guy who was the author and maintainer of one of the most popular Kubernetes open source libraries. Let's just put it that way. His understanding of low level Kubernetes networking was, was astonishing, but then we got to discussing the cost of running his proposed solution and we asked him to present his rationale around scalability factors, around security, and he struggled to satisfy our thirst. You know, we had no doubt this gentleman was highly intelligent, but the SA role is what? Yes, it's a customer facing role and Amazon's guidelines prevented us from providing him with the opportunity to represent AWS in front of customers. We actually, if I remember right, we actually offered him another role that we thought would suit his skill set more and he would have a bigger impact, but I didn't follow up, um, so I'm not sure if he took it or not. I just want to say, be prepared to present your thoughts process. Defend your thought process, respectfully, of course. And for more about this subject, you can watch this video where I discuss why I don't think you should be using the STAR method and what to use instead. And lastly, reason number five, in my opinion, some candidates fail their Cloud Solutions Architect interview is by overlooking the importance of soft skills and teamwork. You see, an effective architect must work well with cross-functional teams to ensure smooth cloud implementation. This is something we keep saying again and again and again, right? So be ready to get questions around your ability to collaborate, to coordinate, and to support other team members. Some interviewers will even ask you questions like, Tell me about a time when you didn't see eye to eye uh, with your colleague because of X. And while there's no really one good answer to this question, right, uh, since it depends on a lot of parameters, there's at least some principles that we all agree on when it comes to effective group collaboration. There you have it, the top five reasons candidates fail their Cloud Solutions Architect interview. According to my opinion, keep those tips in mind, practice your problem solving and communication skills, and I'm confident you will be well on your way to acing your next interview. As always, if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel by clicking on the logo at the bottom right. Good luck to everyone and happy job hunting. Peace out.